Hey, what's up you guys? This is Dan Niddle from Anthemic Recordings. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. If you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe down below and give it a thumbs up. And with that out of the way, let's dive right in. Hey, how's it going you guys? This is Dan Niddle from Anthemic Recordings. And today I just wanted to go over how to get a bright, crispy, acoustic guitar recording. Because I've had a lot of people hitting me up about that, that they're always struggling with getting their acoustics to really blend, but also cut in the mix to be able to hear the chords and thought this video would be helpful. So let's check it out without any processing in the mix. So yeah, it's super dark and dull. It sounds nice on its own, but in, a, in the context of a mix with also a vocal and everything, it's just way too dark. So let me put all the processing back in and we'll listen to that. So that might sound a little too bright on its own, but you got to remember uh, we're not we don't care what it sounds like in isolation cuz no one's going to hear that unless there is a part in the song where it does that and you can automate the EQ down, but our goal is to just get it sounding great in the context of the mix. So let's dive into this one plugin at a time. All right, so let's look at our first EQ move here. We're doing the 4dB shelf at 12k. Let's bring that in and out. So that makes a huge difference. It's adding that top end articulation that we want and the sheen to the high end. And there's still a little bit of boxiness around the 400, so let's take that out and see what that's doing. So this is going to sound too thin on its own. That's because we have a bunch more plugins that come in after, especially when we compress it and do the multiband compression, it's going to fill back in some of that range. So I probably reduced this move a lot more once I had all the plugins in. Um, that being said, I brought up a shelf at 100 dB at 100 and let's check that out. gives us a little bit of that body back. Our next EQ is going to get rid of some of these whistling frequencies and do our high pass for us. So let's check this out, in and out. Not a huge difference. Obviously the low end gets cleaned up a little, but these whistling frequencies, you might not hear them very clearly now, but let me exaggerate it to show you what we're getting rid of. So hopefully that made it pretty clear. When you're doing these high-end boosts, you're get, and especially acoustic guitars where you got steel strings and everything, you're going to get these resonating peaks. And you just you just do a high cue, fish around for it, and hear where it's whistling and just bring it back till you can't hear it anymore. You don't want to go too, too far because you're going to completely destroy the sound. But I generally do 3 to 6 dB when I find peaks. And you don't want to do too many of these, but... Four seemed like the right amount on this one for whatever reason and it helped clean it clean it up pretty nicely. So next in our chain is the compression. And I'm using this 1176 from UAD with a medium attack and a, as quick of a release as possible with a four to one ratio. So let's check out what that's doing. So we're only doing max of like 2, maybe 3 dB at the loudest points, but it kind of fills in the harmonics a bit. Like whatever modeling they did for this plugin, it has a tiny bit of distortion and harmonic content in it, so I like that. And it also smooths the high end out a little bit and gives us some more control on the strumming. Alright, next in our chain is this Mog EQ. This airband is just magic. I just wanted a little more sparkle up top, 
So I'm doing a DB of 20K, which you can't really hear, but the slope, that's just where the shelf starts, but it slopes down. So you're probably hearing some like 12K to 16K, et cetera. So just one DB of it. And I also notice even when I'm not boosting on this, it just adds a nice harmonic content similar to the 1176 we were just talking about. Yeah, it just adds a really nice top end. Next in the chain is a multiband compressor. I find with with acoustic guitars and guitars in general, I don't want to completely g gut these frequency ranges, but they can build up depending on which chord is being played because the frequencies are dependent on the chords or if you're like palm muting or something. So I find multiband compressors to be better than just sucking out a ton of low end. So I've got one set here from like 100 hertz, 140 hertz and below and then 460 to 140. And I've boosted this back up to make, I'm almost, I'm not even trying to reduce this range. I'm just trying to make it even. So it's compressing and I just bring up the output to make sure it kind of stays at unity. That way from chord to chord, it has the same amount of this frequency balance. But this one I am reducing because I don't need anything below 100. So let's uh, AB that. So yeah, it's a little thin without it. I'm kind of using this as an EQ as well as a compressor. So this is a super handy tool just because a very consistent low end or I guess this would be kind of like mid, lower mid range at this point. And next we just have a simple high pass. It was just a little too hi-fi on the top end. So I just brought that in to kind of shave off some of the excess high end that you're not really going to hear, but it's kind of fatiguing. And last in our chain, we have a limiter by Waves. This is just the L1. And we're just using this to shave off any crazy peaks. You can even see it in the waveform a little bit down here. Whenever it switches to a new chord, it's a little louder on that first hit. We're just trying to even those out a little bit. So let's AB that. And we have this releasing pretty quickly because I don't want to hear it clamp down and then slowly come back. It just shaves them off real quick. So it just sounds more consistent overall. So I hope you found that helpful. Hopefully it shows you that, you know, an iter iterative process of getting the high end and the low end balanced right. Don't be afraid to use multiple plugins. But if you can get it with one or two, that's great too. It all depends on the source you're using. But yeah, I hope that helps you guys out and I'll see you guys in the next one. sync hey what's up you guys this is dan Idle from anthemic recordings i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you're interested in connecting or hiring me to work on any of your projects feel free to click any of the links down below in the description and also be sure to smash that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up all right i'll see you guys in the next one